All right, you wonderful weirdos. This is going to be a first. I'm actually reviewing an issue number two after I've read an issue number one for an independent comic book, and that one is, of course, Stellar Lands. Our friends um, Ben and Max uh, reached out and asked if I would review it. I didn't see any reason why I wouldn't, so I read it, and uh, it's fantastic. It is I liked it better than I liked issue one. And that's not saying issue one was bad. Let me be clear on this. Issue two is good. And this is exactly what I, what I hoped would happen, right? As you read a story and its world building ability in this. And the fact that the writers kind of get human interaction. I'll explain more in a second. Is phenomenal to me. That and the artwork is so clean in this. Oh my goodness. Like they don't. They don't BS the backgrounds where they cheapen that for you, right? You're getting full panels of art here. You're getting uh, bright colors, expressions on faces. There's no shortcuts in this book. Not in the writing, not in the dialogue, uh, not in the interactions with characters. And it's relatable at the same time. And I don't care who you are. But my review is going to be from an old vet, if you don't mind. So in this one... We get a military base that's kind of a military pseudo slash greedy corporation. Um, and they like to recruit people for their little space mission. I'm doing this as best I can without any spoilers. So uh, the idea is that this corporation sends people out near a black hole where gravity kind of messes with time. And the explanation is you'll only be there an hour when in fact you'll actually be there possibly years. Because time, when you're in that kind of situation, is kind of unpredictable. So uh, a couple of military guys kind of shoot this idea down, chase the guys off, whatever the case may be, not a big deal. But what ultimately happens is that this mission happens. And they have to go out and try to flush out the bad guys out of something, right? And so what do you do? You send out some bait. And you kind of hope that the bad guys come and, and attack the bait and then you go get the bad guys. Right? Pretty simple. The problem is what happens when an ambush turns into an ambush. They get near a village. The bad guys blow up the village. There's innocent lives of people there. This is where any veteran will kind of relate that's been in the sandbox or been in a peacekeeping mission someplace. On every military base, there's always nationals that work and live on the base, right? And when things kind of get kind of sticky, right, uh, sometimes they're asked to, hey, until this kind of blows off, you, you need to leave. And that happens in this. And this is a bad situation because, again, nationals that are generally working on a military base, a lot of people on the outskirts of the base aren't very... Uh, understanding of the situation <laughs> right <laughs> so uh to avoid this or to assist these people as they leave our young hero decides hey i'll volunteer to go do your little space wormhole mission thing and the reason why he's able to do this is and they mentioned this in issue one is that he's genetically special much like our other heroine in issue one and this has become a thing in the story so he volunteers to go do it. Um, he has himself a little bit of a relationship with one of the blue alien people. That's something I've noticed over the last few years. A lot of blue alien females and guys getting down with that. Teach her own, I guess. Um, but, uh, and of course he has his little one night fling with her and he goes and does the, the, the big space mission. And he grabs a sample of something, gets the sample back, but because of he had to stay there a little longer to help a friend, and you know how much time passed, it turns out it was like 50 years has passed by the time he got back out away from the wormhole, which was interesting. So he comes home and he gets his hero's welcome, right? Uh, and uh, first thing they do is tell him, you know, all the great work and the, the, the lives that it has saved, which is a good thing, right? And then, of course, his mind wanders back to that one night stand and kind of finds out what happened. And, of course, she grew old and died because it's been 50 years, seeing as they were adults. And that's really where the heart was in this. So you get a little bit of heart, you get some great action, 
You get guys being guys in a bar. You get you get all the things I, I would imagine any military guy would probably look fondly off. Maybe even a little brawl in a bar. It happens. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this. And here's the great thing about this. You read issue one, you get this one specific story. You read issue two, you get this one specific story. And then you immediately start making connections inside the story. And my, my speculation for this comic book is, is that we'll probably be introduced to more of these genetically enhanced individuals. And then we'll find out what the real connection with all of them is. And that is something I would be on board with. It's like a story miniseries that carefully it takes its time to tell you the story and doesn't rush it. It gives you clean artwork. Definitely, definitely something I would consider backing on Kickstarter. As always, I will leave the links down below. You have about 13 to 12 days, depending on when I get this video out. Uh, to get on there and all I'm asking you here on the Pokan Joe channel is just go check out the Kickstarter that's all I'm asking the link's right there I'm not asking for you buy sell whatever the case may be just saying hey check it out and see if this is something that you would be interested in space soldiers <sighs> I, I'm on board with that alright guys I'll talk to you all later and thanks for coming by bye